Was that your first band? The one? That yeah. You, how did that sort of? What was your journey from that to like where you are now with your music career? It, it was terrific. I my first band, you know, had a record deal, Atlantic Records. Wow. We got, we got to tour with uh, Fall Out Boy, Gym Class Heroes. Holy shit! Yeah, yeah. Panic at the Disco. Um, Thirty Seconds to Mars with Jared Leto. Uh, just uh, stadiums. I got to tour stadiums in my twenties. You look like a leading woman <laughs> of a band. You know what I mean? I'm Thank picturing you. you in like sparkly hot pants, and you just kind of don't have time for anyone. And you're like, "Where's my fucking <laughs> Avion?" You know? That's where my life should be. I, I, wa- <laughs> I want to be the kind of person that doesn't have time for anyone. In fact, in fact <laughs> that's, that's my like, dream too. <laughs> yeah, that's my dream. If I will have made it at any point in my life, it's that moment where I don't like that's where Andy is so Andy Dick so you know I got to know him yeah so I got to know him very well like you know this year I met him through my podcast but let me just tell you he turns down things that you would not believe that he turns down like enormous movie projects the biggest podcasts possible Joe Rogan everything everything you can imagine right around there and and he's just to be at that point where you don't have to give a fuck about anything, how how, how big um, someone that's is. That's freedom right there. It, it's the most freedom I've ever seen anyone have. And, you know, he's like one of the number one people on Cameo. Are you on Cameo? I am, but I had a bad experience. Like where oh, I, didn't, didn't? I didn't do something right away. I didn't get back to somebody right away. So then... They got mad. Uh, that, yeah. And I was like, yeah. I'm sorry. I don't want to make anyone mad, but I just forgot or I just Yeah, see, so that... That guilt that you have, I'm sorry. So Andy has none of that. Mm. So that's a place that you should make a goal. So you should make a goal. And I want to have this goal too. No guilt. Do not feel bad. If you don't get somebody's cameo, who cares? That's like where Andy's at. And he's like one of the number one people on cameo. He makes the most money on there. Wow. He's terrific on there. And he doesn't need anybody. And it's just such a terrific place to be. And what I get to requests s- does he get? Like, what do people have him do? Um, just like happy birthday, happy anniversary, Merry Christmas, just whatever. And he does these cameos and he enjoys doing them. And it's just, he's the most free person I've ever met. He doesn't have a boss. That's he doesn't great. need a boss. He, he, That's the dream. he, his lifestyle is incredible. He doesn't even need any money. We go, we go somewhere. I, I took him to one of the most uh, expensive restaurants in Santa Monica, right? Because I'm like, I just want to have a nice day with Andy. I want to take him somewhere nice. So we go to this beautiful uh, Casa del Mar. You could look it up. It's a, it's a hotel on the beach where you, you eat and you're right on the beach. So we go there. And I'm, you know, I'm thinking, oh, God, you know, this is going to be an expensive meal. I, I was completely, like, willing to pay for it. But, you know, he never has a credit card or anything, even though he makes all this what? money. What? Does he have because- a chip in his neck? <laughs> like, what is that? So I'll, t- I'll tell you what happened. So after our meal, I was I was fully intending on paying for that meal. The people, two tables down, pay for him. They just, people just do it all the time. People recognize him and they pay for him because they wow. want to just talk to him. And it was hundreds of dollars that meal. And they, then they kept ordering us more Does stuff. Does he know that this is going to happen? So he just shows up walletless and... Yeah, I mean, he doesn't wow. ever have a wallet. He doesn't bring any money like ever. A child can do it, that, can walk around without a wallet and other people pay for stuff. That's amazing. Yes, and that is his life. He doesn't, he turns down movies. He, I, I say, Andy, you should answer that call. You don't know who that's going to be. It's probably going to be somebody good because good people are calling him constantly, like movie stars, people you've heard wow. of, like directors, everything. And he just doesn't feel like very needy for things. He never thinks like, oh, this is my last option no. or opportunity. And it's just a really good way to think of life in general. It's confidence, I think, is what yeah, he yeah. has. He has tremendous <laughs> – he has big dick energy. He has a nine-and-a-half-inch penis. What? I don't know if that has anything to do with what? it. Yeah, he has nine-and-a-half inches. So not so, only does he have a big dick, he has the energy as well, the big yeah, dick yeah. energy. Yeah, well, that's how you get the big dick energy, supposedly. It's I mean, that tall, skinny white boys. Right? Yeah, yeah, like Pete Davidson. You know, they everybody's wondering about him. I know yeah. exactly why, because he's just like Andy. They're exactly the same. Funny, you know, nerdy in a cute way, and probably nice. And that big dick energy that all women like. No women like these needy losers. They, no, they we don't, don't like small dick energy. Yeah, like I know Andy could take me or leave me. Like if I never called him again, he'd be just fine. And that's sexy. <laughs> oh, but like you're so great. Don't you want to be needed a little bit? <laughs> uh, yeah, I do want to be needed a little bit, but like you know, Andy. So, so here's here's like our for instance of something that'll happen to Andy. So he'll he'll take an Uber. So he's been banned from Uber and banned from Lyft from oh, bad what bad behavior, bad behavior. But some somebody will order him a, an Uber, right? So he'll call me from that Uber, 
and he'll be like so chummy with the with the driver and it's just like best friends best friends and the next thing i know he's calling me at a big dinner table with the uber driver and his whole family and they're feeding him so he he's just like one with the world he becomes he, friends yeah he's yeah. just like he's at one with nature he's like yes. all energy runs through him he knows everyone he's everyone yeah. knows him see it doesn't matter who you know if everyone knows you that's the thing wow yeah wow, that's so wise yeah, it really is wise. And that is like a big benefit to, you know, people say, oh, fame, they like downplay fame, why it's bad or negative. It really isn't because I see it. I see it with him and how it benefits him. I mean, the meals I've seen him receive, the gifts I've seen him receive, people give him money all the time. He's been bailed out three times this year uh, wow. by just random people. I, just anything he wants, anything he needs. People the law of abundance is like in full effect with him. Yeah. Exactly. And it's so weird because there's some people like – I mean, myself included, who've been like really the opposite of that, you know, and, and he just is in this mindset naturally mm -hmm. that he was almost born with where he's just like all abundance all the time. And it just comes so a, naturally for real as a mindset for real. Yeah, like it, it, I stopped operating and thinking like a broke person. Yes. Things changed. And like, not like, you know what I mean? Like I'm not at Andy Dick level yet, but uh, so much of it is mindset. So that's really cool. Yeah. Uh, and you met him through the music world? No, no. So um, <clears throat> how did I meet him? Oh, so first he went on a date with my neighbor, Brandon, a guy. Um, Is he bisexual? Yeah, so he's okay. bisexual. He, he leans actually towards men. But um, okay. he, yeah, he's, he's men leaning. But uh, so he it's went 60, on a date. 60, 40. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would say 60, 40. So, so and then my neighbor texted me, 911, uh, 911, help, help, help. And I, I went to help my, my neighbor. And Andy was pretty drunk and uh left my um my neighbor with the bill it was just like a disaster and Andy invited a bunch of guys but I saw something in him that night I saw that he was hurting and that he needed love so bad he was almost like a wounded animal mm -hmm. and it was so like nice to see someone so honest about how they were feeling in that moment because you know I'd been in finance uh finance for like a really long time and and the men that I meet there are just very cold-hearted and they're yeah. like like all about money and they are not like they don't show you who they are. They're like playing no. a game. They're, They're like armored up, you know. Yeah. Like I used to work at a hedge fund, and that was the vibe. Oh, really? And it was like pre-economic collapse. Uh, oh, really? Yeah, it was all about the deal. It was all about. It was very like boys' club and all the you know. What were you doing there? Oh, I was an assistant. Like I was just you know. Really? Like right, so before two thousand eight. Like a madman situation. Uh, yeah, this had to have been like oh seven, oh six, something like that. Oh, yeah. okay. So you know exactly what it's like. Yeah, it's yeah. It's, it's a type of guy, like they call it finance bros. It's it's it's, oh, it's yeah. interesting. It's it's something burgers on the trading desk. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah it's, it's, it's very much like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, so when I met Andy, it was just such a like stark contrast to what I was used to. Because I was like, oh, maybe I could date someone like in finance or, you know, one of these business types. But that just really is not me. So when I met Andy and he was so sensitive, he was crying. He says, I want my life to be better. Wow. You know, uh, he has all these natural gifts. His what year was this? Uh, it was like last year. Okay. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It was last year. It was uh, more, um, I want to say like around this time probably. Oh, yeah. So, so when I met him. And he was crying and he has so many natural comedic gifts that I just appreciate um, so much because, you know, I met a lot of funny people in my life, but him, I mean, just constantly being funny, just not even trying at all. Wow. And then okay. on top of that, the sensitivity, knowing he could be better, knowing he could do better and just really being so vulnerable constantly. It was just so beautiful to me and so attractive. That's cool. Yeah. And then he asked me to marry him. I, I never even thought that he would ask me. I thought he definitely liked men better, but he saw something in me and that, I mean, it's going to sound cocky, but that makes me think he's like, More very, about, <laughs> you're it's the person. It's like he yeah. really fell in love with you, the person. Yeah. Yeah. He fell in love with me. He, he saw like who I was like right away. So I didn't have to like prove myself to him. He didn't know anything about what I'd done. He's you never... didn't have to do that game playing bullshit no. where you have to hide some of yourself or like, you know, no. manage your power or something. Exactly. He didn't know me from like Howard Stern or from anything. Um, you know, he didn't know about any of that. That didn't matter to him. And I could tell what mattered to him was more important than what mattered to other guys because he really saw that I could be good for him. You know, I, like he saw that I cared and that I was genuine and 
And that was what was important to him because he, he really like did not ever look me up or know anything about what I did. He didn't know anything about me. He just saw that we had a really like genuine connection. Wow. And, and I appreciated that so much because I just didn't see that in anyone else, <coughs> any other guys. Yeah, it was probably yeah. like sparks and like a soul vibe. And not really sparks, but not like sexy sparks. But Friend had- sparks, like just <coughs> yeah, like I I haven't connection. had yeah, I haven't had like a sexy sparks. But one time we made out and it was pretty good. But um, the sexy sparks thing I don't believe in as much anymore. You think that's all just chemical and it's like fleeting and yeah, I, I think you can have that with anyone and it's not necessarily love. True, true, and yeah. I think. When, when I meet people and t- mostly comics who are like, oh, I can't seem to keep a relationship after two years. It's like, you fucking pussy. That's when the work starts. Like, yeah, yeah, that's when the hormones wear off. That's when you have to, that's where love becomes a verb. And it's like an act that you do every day and you yeah. choose to grow with somebody. You yeah, know? it's work. It's definitely work. You're like, oh, gotta go. The there's there's no more sparks. See you later. On to the next one. It's like, that's, that's going to be your whole life if that's your, the way you operate. Yes, absolutely. And uh, I mean, I haven't figured out it perfectly yet, but as far, I mean, everybody's against this relationship with me and him. Everybody, like people, nobody likes it. My family Aww. doesn't like it. Uh, people say that I'm like using Andy, yet. but people have said that about everyone that I've ever been with in my life because I've always been with like good people that are very talented. So they just say I'm using that person. But wow. so that that is a tough aspect of it. And, uh, but, you know, I just, it's, Every time he calls me and every time we talk, it's just so great that I can't get – I I just – I just love the guy. I really do. So you recently broke off your engagement, but you're still, like, friends and cool. Yeah, we're, we're still, like, hanging out. And, I mean, he was supposed to move in last week. He just – he's irresponsible. I mean, he has, he has bad qualities, too. He's irresponsible. He can't get it together. He just – Like a real yeah. creative. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Mm-hmm. He your is strengths like – your weaknesses, it's like you wouldn't have one without the other. Yes. Yes. So so he he is caring and all those wonderful qualities, but he's just not responsible with things. And, you know, that's that's the tough part. But, I mean, I think it is worth it because he's just he – his, his heart is just tremendous. And uh, mm-hmm. people – like, for instance, everybody in my office was, like, against me being with him, right? And they they thought everything that people typically think about our relationship. And then I brought him to the office party, and he was so wonderful and kind. And, and everyone loved him, and he charmed the everyone, of everyone. He's, he's so charming. Yeah. Everybody – like, people came up to me. They're like, oh, I'm so sorry about what I said about him. I'm like, you know, you're just reading stuff. They, when they publish things in the news, they just try to get the most viewers. So, so no matter what they write, it's going to be the worst possible. It's never going to be something like – you know, good about him. They have a narrative that they follow and that they, they're trying to make money. So I just tell people, don't believe what you read. There's a lot more to the person than what is displayed. There's a lot more to him than what people know. I mean, there's, he's just such a complex person. And that is the down, that's the only downside of fame that I've actually seen is that, you know, they could paint a narrative of you that is, is negative. And then, and then you get so much hate from it. And that is difficult. Yeah, it sucks. I I also that's part of why I love doing this podcast. I like talking to people like that are deeply misunderstood, whether it's like yes. internet drama or some sort of ugh, scandal or bullshit, or someone is purposely misunderstood to push a narrative or um because it suits a particular like political party. Like that's why I like I I've been there. So when I see someone being like so misunderstood and canceled and censored, like I'm like, I want them. Yeah. I I hate the canceling. I hate the canceling. The canceling has got to go. There's going to be nobody left (laughs) at all. I mean, every single person pretty much is canceled at this point. 